You, 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 what is up, my We'd also love to share ours. It's me, the one Dear King Paramecium cares only for green spirulina, but we sort of have a thing for protesting. Here we go. Sorry about the poor lighting. It's, so let's take a look at I gotta see by the window. Starting with one of the most inclusive groups. Domains. You're playing solitaire. Ah, domains. It's so awesome that all of life will fit into them. So there are three domains. Bacteria, archaea, and Dude, it's the Triforce. The domain bacteria is full of bacteria. They're prokaryotes, and therefore, they have characteristics. It's the Triforce, bro. These can include bacteria that make you sick. The bacteria that are in your intestines, helping you digest. The bacteria helping with deep The bacteria fixing nitrogen in the soil. Tons of different kinds of bacteria. Don't even read that. They have some major DNA uh, structure differences that give them their own And while Let's they may seem more closely related to right bacteria now. since they are prokaryotes, this research only has one thing you need to have more in common with eukaryotes, which is interesting. Many of the so RK are extremophiles. That is, many of them like the extremes. Some like extreme salt environments, for example, which means they can handle extremely salty environments like the Dead Sea. Or methanogens. They can live where there is very little oxygen. In fact, most of them can't even handle oxygen. They use carbon dioxide to make their energy instead and produce waste gas, methane. Some of them live inside animals that eat a lot of cellulose, like cows or mice. Another extremophile is thermophiles. They like extreme temperatures. If you ever dreamed of living near the deep sea hydrothermal vents, well, if you were a thermophile, you'd be in luck. We mentioned that RK and bacteria domains are separate because they have some major DNA and structure differences that are significant enough to separate them. And so does the third the domain, day. eukarya. These are eukaryotes, so and so they have characteristics that we've mentioned before that are common for eukaryotes. And that's where we'll focus right now. So the next that's level is less inclusive and more specific than domains. Like the level of kingdom. Now here is a big disclaimer about kingdoms. Its organization is often changing, oh, and it's not even something that all scientists agree on. We've seen a five kingdom system that looks like this, and a six kingdom system that looks like this. And it's important to understand it's a changing view as we learn more about DNA and cell structure evidence. That's what makes classification so exciting. But if we focus on these here, <laughs> let's touch on them briefly. Progesta, extremely diverse, and there's often talk about dividing it because of how diverse it is. There are protists that are animal-like, and protists that are oh, plant-like, and man. protists that are fungi-like, but many scientists don't consider them to quite meet the requirements to be in those kingdoms. Protista includes both autotroph protists, making their own food, and heterotroph protists, which can consume other things for energy. Most protists are unicellular, but they can be multicellular. Some have cell walls made of cellulose, which is kind of similar to plants, and like some don't. Sort. Fungi are heterotrophic. So no photosynthesis for them. But that's hard to remember. Just think about athlete's foot. It's a fungus on your foot, and it's not doing any photosynthesis there because that'd be really weird. No fungus there, causing irritation, eating bits, skin cells. Fungi are usually multicellular, but they can be unicellular. And it's toad. Have cell walls. Next up, plants. plants are autotrophs. Yes, even for diverse plants, because they still make their glucose in some bacteria. Plants are, for the most part, most of them. Most have cell walls and cell walls. Finally, last up, animalia. Animal. Okay, Hydra, you can come back. This mostly multicellular and heterotroph kingdom is the kingdom to which you belong. So now we have the other hierarchy levels. We get less inclusive, therefore more specific, as we move down to the hydra's phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Because the species name is the most specific that you can get, it is the least inclusive. Now, you'll notice we wrote its species name here. Remember how we said we'd bring up Carl Linnaeus again? Well, it's because of him that we have this naming system binomial nomenclature. This two-part naming system that we use uses Latin or Greek roots. This is its scientific name. See that first name? That's its genus. It's written with a capital letter at the start, and it's written with italics. See the second name? That's its specific epithet. 
which is a fancy way of saying that it refers to one species in the genus. Lunchables. It has a lowercase letter, and it's also written in Italian. Subscribe. So why this does it video, care about these science This video is names? sponsored by Lunchables. Well, you could come up with a lot of common names for an organism that Pepperoni. vary based on location. Take this mountain lion for you, example. It's also known I as a have puma, a cougar, for you. There's or a Texas panther. <laughs> Same animal, different names. But its scientific uh, name here is specific. <laughs> And recognize regardless of your location. And that gives power to an awesome way to organize and name species. Well, that's it's it for the new right. And we remind you to yeah. stay curious. This is very good, right? Let's switch back to the weird Android startup thing. I'm starting up with upgrading. <laughs> Where's that music coming from? Oh, yeah. It's coming from your back. It's my Game Boy. Okay. <laughs> so I'm here. Well, I'm here yeah, to what it. you have is that classification of living things. Where it goes through. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, Dude, you should play. Can I play the Game Boy? Maybe I should do Let's Play of Mario Brothers 3. Dude, oh, I forgot about that. Is that the, which version is that? The Game Boy one. Yeah, I know that, but which one? The third one. Oh, that's not, that's easy. Yeah. No, it's not. Hold out. <gasps> Maybe. Uh, uh, I don't think Mrs. Merch would be too happy if I pulled it out until she's distracted. Five, seven, 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 seven. Okay. So this, Dude, the lighting's still this better paper, if you're looking you can at actually it, see things. It's the answer key to this, so we don't have to fill in the blanks. Still upgrading. Um, but it starts with domain. When you learned about classification in the past, it always started keeping fast and fast order family species, right? right? Domain came about in the 1990s. So after I finished high school and college, now we have domain. I was done with all my biology stuff by the time they added it. So it's just one more layer. Before you guys get to school, all right, uh, okay. today we're again. going to be doing a let's As play. New material is found, new Probably. Comes to life, yeah, like I got cards in my backpack. Um, so they, they start in this with this idea that. What would a grocery store be like if it wasn't classified and organized? It would be like a bunch of food. Okay. I mean, how many of you go to the grocery store and you pick up laundry soap next to... Wait, are you writing this down somewhere? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> are you writing this down? No, you guys oh, don't have to. I'm to find it. So, the point being that, right, we're going to classify things, we're going to group them together according to similar to different tech. features um, that they share. That's what I want to do. Do it. It's easy. Okay. Yeah, so, the just like they best organize the store where the like things are together, right, we don't find cereal in 10 different aisles. You might find it in two because they usually All right, I'm just going to show the cards. All right. Okay. Why do they classify because they have over 8 million species on Earth? I got that song stuck in my head now. Keeping on organized in here to study life. I thought it was going to get first. Taxonomy is what we call this. The study of the classification of living things is taxonomy. So that's really what we're looking at for the next do it. three days. Then you do your project, and then you review and take your test. Linnaeus came up with this system, late 1700s, 1800s. Um, he's a Swedish botanist. Linnaeus um, who? Um, and Carlos. he developed this a long time ago. 
Binomials, Car two names, Carlos names. Two names. That ever comes up on a test, we remember it because of this. Where's Gavin? Gavin. Gavin, show me, show me. Alright, so. Do it. Every species has two names. The first name is the genus name, which tells us what things animals like. The second name is the species name. Which becomes a little bit Fine. more particular. Gap um, needs to what are, what finishes. Are, I don't know. In English, we would call them dogs. dogs. In French, we would call them time. Doge. In Hebrew, you know those people who say that? Mandarin, Gouge. Japanese, no. German, I can't say that. <laughs> oh, I can't. I can, I can do YouTube. I can do YouTube. Uh, this video is sponsored by me. Perfect card game for on the go or stay at home. Scientific names, even though we're like they're in Latin. Right. And they I came up with that on the spot. That's the universal name. Did it for you. Okay. Of what it is. Because in every language, we have different words for the same thing. But scientifically, they're all penis familiarities. Um, they're universal. I just said that common names differ. Common names are not specific. We could say lizards, but there are like they're all dogs. But how many dogs? Now you can see the four. What is this? One? They use this one in the what do you call that? Puma. Do you call it Puma? Panther. They didn't do cat mouth, but that's another one. I do. I do box. Yeah, box cat or cat mouth. But it's Puma and color. So, the rules. We'll get to those. But here you go. Dogs, wolves, and coyotes. Actually, timber wolves. Penis familiaris, penis lupus, a wolf, penis lupus. They are all in the family, in the genus. Okay, penis. I'm gonna. Okay, because that actually is a dog in Latin. By the way, if you might have that to take the language requirement in college, if you take Latin, you never have to take the application portion. Okay, it's just not. Because it's a dead language in the race. This thing's already done. You can test over it and learn it, right? Uh, you didn't want to go take the course in the head for five years of being a kid, but she's been left. So, it's the genus name because all of these animals are dog like. Alright. Rules! I can go for these back because you should know most of it. You learned this in elementary school, I forget what grade, and you should have said that. Um, the first letter, the first word is always capitalized. The first letter of the second word is never capitalized. Um, we love the word as italicized or underlined. Now, it's kind of hard to write in italics. So, usually, if you're writing this out, you're going to underline. Okay. You remember when you did your penis pettitus assignment? I always did that in italics. This goes on. We were coming to this. If you are underlining, do not underline the space between the names. I don't know why, that's just the rule. That's the way Linnea has set it up, and everyone has followed ever since. Um, domains are new. Okay, so you're going to need to know the domains. We have three domains. Eukarya, Eubacteria, it is printed correctly on your blue chart that you have. Up here, even though it's from the same person, they left out the EU on the slide up here. Eubacteria and Archaea. So, Eukarya are the organisms made up of eukaryotic cells. Thanks. Cells that have nucleus. Eubacteria are the newer bacteria with prokaryotic cells. These are the ones that are going to make you and I sit. Okay, so Streptococcus, Staphylococcus, yes. all of those, E. coli, they there are in the new bacteria domain. Yeah, you can't even see them. Um, okay. Archaea, the ancient bacteria, <laughs> are going to be the ones that we'll look at that. Um, they're old. We could go look at it in the snow. I love the snow. <laughs> 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 
So you they are going to be the ones right. that. Oh, oh, all right, now, if you turn to your picture with the ant, Let's see how much we get through. Oh, I don't think we're ever going to get to that. Right. Okay. All right. So on the ant, the ant slide is not exactly the same as the one up here, but it's fairly close. So it's kingdom animalia. The domain is eukarya. You don't have that on your paper, I don't think. Just, ah. I the <clears throat> just the first one says animals are pattern folks. Because they rely on other living organisms for food. In the second link, all of the animals are multicellular, meaning they are made up of more than one cell. Third link, all these animals are eukaryotic because they contain a nucleus. So it was heterotroph, multicellular, eukaryotic. Um, in the little box, the animal kingdom is very diverse. Some are carnivores, some are herbivores, some are parasites, some are sick ticks, such as ticks. Others are detrivores. Detrivores are those organisms that feed off of dead stuff, dead decaying matter. They ingest dirt. Alright, they have some examples listed up here, the sponge, the worms, the insect, oh, the mid, the mammal. We've got the centipede, that's a sponge, this is a platypus, that's a platypus, that's a platypus, and bear. Um, Team oh, beer. Oh. 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 Sea stars, eagles, anything you want to think of that animal, animal they want. So, that's the first one. The second one has to do with the mushroom on it. This is kingdom fungi. Enzyme. Um, these are heterotrophic because they rely on other living organisms for food and or dead organisms for food. Um, most of them, this is the next two lines, the two, the next two fill in the Most of them are multicellular, like mushrooms. Some of them, like yeast, are unicellular. So second line uh, is multicellular, there's the wait, third one down is the Most are multicellular like mushrooms. Um, wait, some the are unicellular because they're human cells. All of these cells, the fungal cells, are eukaryotic. They contain a nucleus. Then they show you the picture of the cell. And there's a fill in the blank there. Basically, cell walls contain pipe. Ben, what's the first one? And then the chitin or chitin um, is similar to the material you find in the shell of like a lobster. <laughs> it gives it some strength, stability to it. The big examples here are mushrooms, yeast, and mold. Uh, many of these cells can release powerful enzymes to help break down dead matter. That's else. why they act with some of the natural parasites feeding off of other organisms. That would be a mold. The type of mushroom determines what it grows on. Green. Some of them are toxic Green. to you, so mm -hmm. you don't eat them. You eat them all? You can eat all of mine. Seven. Are we doing match? I don't eat much. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah, I don't eat it. Mm -hmm. But I don't eat them all. Yeah. Well, the only mold most of you eat is blue cheese. <laughs> yeah. Blue. And if you like the stronger cheeses like blue cheese, it actually does have mold. That's it's moldy it. cheese. No, it's good. <laughs> But it's good. <laughs> it's right. The next one is the bottom left corner. You have a picture of corn there for you. Um, this is the quintessential tree from where? Um, we sat in Africa, we see those trees. Yeah. So, yeah. Can't see today. Um, Kingdom Plantae. <laughs> Plants are autotrophic because they can produce their own food. So we're coming back to some of these terms now that we talked about way, 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 way back when we talked about characteristics of living things. They're autotrophic. Um, we talked about heterotrophs and autotrophs. How do we get our food? We talk about eukaryotic, prokaryotic, what kind of cell does it, is it? Um, so these come back now in this next week. 
Um, secondly, all of these are multicellular, meaning they're made up of more than one cell. They are all eukaryotic because they contain nucleus. Six minutes. Six minutes. Mm -hmm. Plant cells are unique because they are eukaryotic cells that contain world right. Dude, dude, right. the these class periods do not last long. Dude. I know they're only the third one is uh, eukaryotic. If it has a nucleus, it is a eukaryotic cell. That's why they're in the domain eukarya. Um, eukaryotic cells. So eukaryotic, multicellular, autotrophic, they contain more class. The picture with the cell wall is made up of cellulose. Depending on the type of plant, the process of reproduction differs. Um, some plants produce seeds that they hide in a tube or inside a cone, like pine tree. Um, some plants Dude, make her suck. Um, right after spring break, we're going to be spending a few days looking at plants. Studying the organs, the plants, the structure, and the function over the right. Let's go, let's go. Your examples are mosses, ferns, flowering plants. You could also put um, conifers or pine trees. Is it my Yeah. All right. Protista. There are two slides up here for protista. So your one. Okay. There are two for the year one, so this one you're not going to write anything off of. Okay. Um, kingdom protista, they are the most diverse kingdom. Okay. They're neither plant nor animal nor fungus, so they're the oddballs. They're all kinds of stuff. We have diatoms, this is an electron microscope picture, so they're high really high. These are diatoms, this is kind of in a thermal microscope slide. Diatoms are in the ocean. That's what the fish, kind of the baby whales, kind of float around. Yeah, they're all up. Um, Kelp, uh, giant Kelp. Does that skip me three times or one time? And then, of course, we've got Euclinas and Amoebas and Paramecians and all of those. So oh, no. they are so diverse, they've actually now made super groups to go with this. So it's part of this domains, kingdoms, super groups, biomass, Heck, class for, over for and the super groups are down here. Yeah, um, you're not going to get tested over these. I don't even know how to pronounce all of them except for number three. Number three is Rhizaria. Um, number one is Escobata. Benz. Fucking boy, you should put a boot on. Rhizaria is um, Archaeoclastica. That's going to be one of the more bacteria like ones. And the unit is the unit. This is where you're going to get your info. First section. Some protists such as Euclina contain chloroplasts. Sorry about this. Which means they are autotrophic. We know I love you. Because they obtain their energy from the sun or chemicals. Um, when something lives down at the very deep bottom of the ocean floor next to the hydrothermal vent, they do not survive via photosynthesis. It's chemosynthesis from materials that come out of the center of the earth. Okay. On the second one, other protists like amoebas and paramecia are heterotrophic because they engulf tiny food particles via endocytosis. And when we talk about endocytosis, they can just kind of their cell membrane moves around so and engulfs it and moves it in. Amoebas can move. They're like little shape shifters. They have no set structure. And they, they, their cytoplasm flows and pushes their cell membrane in different directions and they flow along the um, Third one down. Most of them are unicellular. Because most protists are single cells. Some of them are multicellular. Like the LGs. Protists are eukaryotic. They contain nucleus. Some of them have a plant like cell wall made of cellulose. Diatoms, which I showed you on that last slide, have um, silicone in their cell wall. So the example here was that the fourth one. Okay. So 
a gimbal here, a Viva, Paramecium, Flying Gold, Giant Elk. Four. 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 Our gill bacteria is the next I'm not one. letting them see this one, guys. Um, these are the ancient bacteria. These are actually pretty interesting. We'll watch the video clip on them when we come back next time. Maybe. Um, they're extreme of fighting. They're lovers of extremes. These are the bacteria that we're going to find living today, surviving off of frozen pea poop, because they live in that cold of the temperature. Um, the radio Duran bacteria, who lives in the core of a nuclear power plant, because they thrive on the radio. Yes, I change it with your six. There we go. There are some that are considered halophiles because they live in like the Dead Sea or the Great Salt Lake. High, high concentrations of salt. The pathogens they talked about, the ones that love methane. They they eat methane. Okay, that is a big deal. So it's extreme environments. Um, the first one, that's the first answer. Extreme. They can survive extreme environments. They are autotrophic. What kind? Because they use energy from the sun or chemicals. Some of them are heterotrophic, like the methanogens, because they Yellow. eat methane. Okay. Um, they are unicellular. I love the heterotrophic ones. It tells you they get their nutrition from the digestive tract of animals, plant remains, or sewage. Like, you know, they survive off the raw sewage. So, they are... Um, unicellular, they are prokaryotic. And, and that's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just going to win this. I need that. Right. You are lucky that you didn't enjoy that because you, you wouldn't have friends anymore. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Be sure to check out my merch. And have a fantabulous day.